Once you've downloaded data from the SMFT1000 into TrueTest, you can view the test information in the site inspection screen. The first thing we're going to see at the top left is the certificate information. The TrueTest software and the SMFT1000 are based on the IEC 62446-1 testing of photovoltaic systems standard. This is a requirement in Europe. It's not usually a requirement in the United States, but it's a really good guideline to work off of. In here, you can see the type of tests that were done. You can look at the basic information about the client, the site, the contractor. You can see some installation details. You can get information about the utility. You can also use the pencil icon at the top right to edit any of this information. The next thing here is the test results summary. This is an overview of the tests that are in this inspection. We can see how many passed, how many failed. We can see when the test was done. We can see when the next test is going to be due. We can also see some information about the test, the test instrument and the technician who did the test. Again, you can use the pencil edit button to change all the data in here, including the test engineer. You can see that there is a signature on this certificate as well. In a little bit, we'll see where you can add that signature file into TrueTest so it shows up on these reports. The next thing down is a visual inspection checklist. This is found on the SMFT 1000. It's a list of requirements in that IEC standard. You can go in there, you can print a blank version of the checklist if you want a hard copy to go out into the field to manually fill it out as opposed to doing it digitally in the SMFT 1000. You can delete checklists from here. And you can see whether something passed, failed, or didn't apply to that installation. Now you can set this information in the SMFT 1000. You can also do it in TrueTest itself. So you don't need the SMFT 1000 to set the visual inspection checklist pass, fail, or not applicable. You can add comments in here to each line if you wanted to give more detail, and you can even add photos to illustrate that something either passed or failed. Um, great place to add more documentation so you can see exactly what was wrong. The next one down is the functional test. This is exactly the same as the visual inspection checklist. This can be found in the function power setting in the SMFT 1000. As with the visual inspection checklist, you can print out a blank hard copy, you can delete the checklist, and you can add pass, fail, or not applicable in TrueTest itself. Now, there's only three lines in these functional tests, so pretty straightforward. You can add comments and attach photos just like we did with the visual inspection. Now, getting into the array report, this is where the bulk of the test data lives. The tree on the left hand side is how TrueTest organizes information from the SMFT 1000. We can add distribution boards or inverters. We can delete things. We can duplicate whatever the selected item is, and we can copy the tree structure. This allows us, if we have a large system that is very repetitive, so maybe it has one distribution board with several different inverters with multiple combiners and multiple strings, and they're all the same, allows us to easily copy things in TrueTest. Now, one thing you should know, you do not need to manually set up this tree in TrueTest. As you're taking test data in the SMFT 1000 and putting the location to that test data, when you download that data into TrueTest, it will automatically build this tree. So you don't necessarily need to do it manually um, before you do the testing. You can add information on the distribution board here. You can see the test results, although distribution board tests are not used in this module. They'd be used with other Fluke hardware that uses the TrueTest software. We can add notes in here about the distribution board. Now, we, as we change different levels, we'll see different test information. And at each level, you will be able to see a lot of the information in the tests at levels below it on the tree. So here we're at the inverter level. We can see the test results there. Uh, we have a power test for this inverter. 
So with the SMFT, we tested power on the DC side. We tested power at the AC side. Um, here we got a 70.5% efficient inverter. I will mention that this is an off-grid inverter at my house, which typically have lower efficiencies than a standard grid connected inverter would. Um, so that's not a, necessarily an unusual result. Now in this little results box, if I click anywhere in that box, this screen will open. Now I can click the edit button here and edit any of this data. I can change whatever information is in here. One thing to note here, this is a good place to illustrate it. I have inverter efficiency limit at 90%. So as a result, this test failed because I'm at 70.5%. This is where you can change that 90% limit. So if I drop this to 70%, this test will then become a passing test. Pass or fail just relates to the limit that you manually set in true test. So you can change that results. You can use this drop down results here to change a fail to a pass manually as well. Another thing to note in this screen is the this move test data button right here. If you find that the test data was incorrectly assigned to a specific location, if you hit this move test button, it will say, do you want to move this measurement to the unassigned list? If you click let, yes, you can, it'll add it to unassigned. You can go into unassigned. You can find that piece of data. You can expand the information for that data, you can go to location and you can change where that data is located and then reassign it to that inspection. So this is a really convenient way to reassign that data if you need to.